This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs The Playbook, and I am in the midst of a studio, artistic genius, Mikhail Brandrup. He is an artist, a creative designer, an amazing graphics person, uh, but most importantly, we met on Instagram, and <laughs> I got here and just felt like I was coming home, and you know, I've never spray painted a thing in my life, although I'd like to go drink some Jaeger and go out on the streets and do some murals <laughs> together. This is incredible. Most people don't think as art as entrepreneurial. I look at graphic arts and the arts itself as a huge entrepreneurial area now. Mm -hmm. that everybody needs this visual side of things. You have a very unique feel to what you do. What was the inspiration for you to, number one, become an artist, but to make a business out of it? Yeah, it, it's... First of all, thank you very much for having, uh, oh, for having me. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited uh, <laughs> and it's good to finally meet you. And uh, there's a very great question. You know, I've always been uh, drawing and painting my whole life, but I tell you, it took me 30 years to find out that what you see here is what I want to make a living of. That took me 30 years. And um, overnight success. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> exactly. Everyone likes to say it's like that. And um, my mom, she gave me a little push in, into, into, it was more into the advertising world. And I was sure that my passion was to have a design agency, which I started in my early 20s. So I started my first um, company when I was 23, together with my brother and, and uh, that Mickey that he just met. And after five years, I was trapped, like I couldn't get my creativity out uh, because there's trapped. corporate design, visual identities, all this. And I just wanted to do what I wanted to, not dictating by other people, you know? Um, and what advice would you give? Because I think that's a huge thing, whether you know, you're in creative design or graphics like you were, or whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, it's one of the most common things that I hear. There they train themselves, they have passion for the skills, knowledge, mm -hmm and desire of the art of what they do, even lawyers, right? It's like certain lawyers, there's certain parts of what being a lawyer is, but then they just feel trapped after a while. Where does the courage come or the impetus come to say, okay, I'm gonna give up all the security of a business, high paying job, my brother, my best friend, we started this business, and I'm gonna go tell them, hey, sorry, I wanna go do what I wanna do. I have, I had, an emotionally linked reason. I had a compelling wire that was huge um, and I was ready to, to pay whatever price. I made that promise to myself to pay whatever price. I was ready to live on the streets, do anything to follow my dream. I had a calling that I just couldn't avoid, like an inner voice, I'm supposed to do this. That's amazing. And, and, and I went after it with everything I had. And, and do, you, that, do you think that everybody has that possibility. So it's so, so interesting because people talk about the why and I talk about the what, mm. right? Because you started with what you wanted to do. Uh, yeah. Right? And the why, the what evolves and it may take 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You started early with your what, but what's changed? But I really find that some people miss are misguided by someone like you because yeah, I believe... I can see that. Like, I can see right? that. Napoleon Hill talks about the one thing that it takes to be... Uh, fulfilled, passionate, pur purposeful, and profitable is an unwaning desire, which is what you just explained mm. and it illustrated through your energy. Like there was nothing, you're gonna willing to live on the streets. I remember saying, you know, I'd shovel shit with my hands six days a week if I was able to do this, this, and this, right? The same kind of thing, mm. but not everybody finds that desire. And do you think that it's just a matter of time if they stay focused or some people will never find it? You make it sound that I, I, that I found out what I wanted so easy, but I tried tons of stuff. I served the military, I had tons of jobs. I started like as a newspaper boy and you know, I've, I've just been through so much. And again, you know, it took me 30 years to find out, okay, this is what I want. I knew I wanted to do something creative, uh, but damn, the creative world, you know? And when you were in that process, you know, cause I see this a lot as well. This is, this is a really good point to help people is that you did know what you want, but the one thing that you did that I did in my life was I always just kept my options op open, right? I could list out my career, which is so eclectic, <laughs> you know, until mm. I found this deep, deep, deep desire. And my focus was always, I'm gonna keep trying different things, but always put the light into it. Even if it wasn't the light inside of me, I was gonna find the light in what I was doing. Yeah. So if, you know, my oh, okay, fifth grade teacher, you know, paid me five bucks an hour to pull weeds. 
I was going to figure out a challenge for myself to find the light in the weeds to see how fast I could get it done, which was counterintuitive because he was paying me per hour. But the only way I could find enjoyment in it was to make a race out of it. Uh, I probably should have figured out a different race. But anyway, <laughs> you know, through that process, was there ever doubt that you weren't going to find the why in the what's that you were trying? Yeah, um, definitely, because I, I had a huge identity crisis when the transition between having the advertising agency and going full time as an artist, that, that took me a while because I didn't know what was going on with me. I just, uh, I was just, I, I knew that I'm not supposed to do this anymore. I'm not supposed to keep doing all this corporate design. I didn't know the answer. And we're sitting right in the answer right now. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But I, I kept searching for it and I kept uh, taking chances. Um, and also moved to LA like people thought I was crazy. Yeah. Um, but you also move with your brother and your best friend. People vote for what other people want. How did you convince them? You know, because they're taking risks for you. Yeah. Right? right? You're the talent. But moreover, you had not only convinced yourself, but in the mood, you had to convince your team, hey, we're going to go for this together. What was that like to allow yourself to have them vote for what you wanted? Yeah, initially there was no team. There was just my brother, and he didn't see <laughs> That's it as a, a team. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah there was, and he didn't see it as a like a, a full time job for him at all. He was just, you know, yeah, I think I can sell you art, and he was doing like a lot of stuff on the side as well, you know. And then suddenly he could see, okay, um, and and I was just super thankful to see how well received my art was when I finally started to do some paintings. I remember I was super nervous to post. It was like before the algorithm changed on Facebook. Okay. I posted like one of my first pieces on Facebook and it, it went uh, viral completely, crashed my web shop and everything. I just remember, <laughs> well, I was just I I extremely thankful. And all that, uh, that, that whole process uh, brought me to the position I'm in now. And, and that is to help other people because I know what it's like. I know what it's like that, you, and especially being an artist, just to just talk about United States, there's more than 2 million artists here in the United States trying to make it. And 75% of artists over here, they make 10,000 a year or lower. 50% doesn't even make 5,000. I want to change that because I know that feeling when you are able to follow your, your, your passion and follow your dream, it's, it is hard work. And I, I want, and when I saw what you're doing, empowering one billion people to be Over happy. A billion. Take don't me live, on, man. I want to. I want to. I want to be on that train because it, it, it's. I want to change the world. You get me choked up because when I thought about the math behind impacting over a billion people to be happy and inspiring them and teaching them just simple values in order to effectuate what you do, and then I walked in and I and I told you that piece behind you that I absolutely love and I'm into geometry and shapes and. It, it what I told you what it meant to me with the attention that you have to give to how things coincide and the intention that you put into it. And then you said to me, which I had no idea because we were communicating via social media no, no, no. that you told me that this was actually inspired by videos that I had done or messaging. That's what people don't realize that, you know, here's, you know, some ex sports agent that is on the internet trying to empower people to be happy and somehow their frequency gets <laughs> yeah. to one of the world's greatest artists who then creates a, a representation of the inspiration that I'm trying to create verbally or with video that you're now putting into one of the ancient forms, right, in mediums, mm -hmm. which then will be captured and sent right back onto social media to <laughs> a billion people again, right? And hopefully that'll just send the message out of happiness, inspiration, and how we all can impact others, even though sometimes we don't have a clue how, as long as we're sticking to improving our own frequency. Give me a little bit of insight of the picture behind you of how that starts. You watch my video and you know what happens, was there a picture in your head or give me a, the process that you go through? Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot more abstract than, than yeah. you laid out here. Well, because, I'm not an artist. So. <laughs> be, because even it, it can, it almost came after I finished. I was like, wow, because in, in my subconsciousness, I had some of this, the, the stuff that you've been talking about. Um, and there is something written uh, like on the front of the canvas as well that I did. A, if, if you look very closely, you can read it. And, and it's like focus on what you, what you can actually change. Um, and uh, uh, don't let 
you know, like your everything external, don't let that mess with your internal balance. Yeah. Um, and what really uh, got to me in that, um, that you, 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 you said how to turn a setback into a setup. It, it, it's, it's all how you look. Uh, are you going to see an opportunity? Or are you going to see a failure or a setback? It, it, it's all in your mind. And I'm also, uh, all my art is about that. And it's been on that from the very start. But um, this is the next level of it. Uh, because I always express that everything is possible. I always had the belief that everything is possible. Um, and I started to tell that story with the first piece I told you about that went viral. And I think I was just communicating something through my art that people have never seen before. Um, and it was like this abstract world map. Um, and I wanted, you, you know, like my manifest is like to um, uh, create an infinite universe where everything is possible that you can just, for just, I'm happy if you just for 10 seconds can forget everything around you. Negative thoughts, <laughs> noise, everything. Just for one minute, um, uh, you can stop up. And, and, and that is in, in, in the details, that is in, in my thoughts. Um, so it's actually funny because I just thought when I was almost done with the piece, damn, I was inspired by you. And I know how much it means when people, they reach out to me and like, hey, you inspired me to do this piece. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's why I wanted to tell you because I know how that feels. That's, it's amazing. And it represents to me an issue that I think a lot of people don't understand. And that's shifting the paradigm uh, or the counterintuitive understanding of cause and effect. And as I watch you and watch and looked at the art behind you, a lot of people think that they see something and that what is causes an effect to us. Mm. It's the exact opposite. And there's nowhere where it's more present than in an artist, an extremely talented artist like yourself, that the effect is happening here and that's the cause. Right? That's the cause. And then that cause creates an effect in other people called inspiration. Mm. Uh, or with I did the art, it'd be called disappointment. Here it's called inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> or it's called, what is that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's funny because my son, he drew one of the first pictures and I was like, oh my goodness, that's such a good picture of you. And he goes, it's you, daddy. I'm like, I mean, of me, of course. It's <laughs> one word. Because oh, yeah. he's so much better looking. Um, to that point of inspiration, way back, you know, through the journey of, you know, military, odd jobs, yeah. all the different struggles that you had, even before you found, you know, your why, you know, the, the mm. never ending desire to do this. Mm. You know, I'm really curious on what uh, skills or attitude or perspective you took, you know, when you knew you were in something that you didn't want to do the rest of your life, but yet you were making what I call a monetary frequency decision. So I believe we sometimes, especially early in life, we make these pragmatic decisions at a monetary frequency, mm. a level saying, I live in this pragmatic world. I need to make money to eat and have a place to sleep. I'll grow a skill and knowledge and, and figure out my desire later, but I'll get up into where you make your decisions now. With You, you made a faith-based decision. And uh, the more we make faith-based decisions, the more we're able to blend both worlds together. I can say apparently to that, apparently I did. I, I, a lot of the times I didn't even know what I was doing. Uh, and that, that's the crazy thing about and, it. And how do you allow yourself not to know what you're doing? Because, you know, coming from uh, anal retentive, OCD, you know, business, I, I would never, it took me a long time to not know what I was doing. I always had to know, right? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always made God, God laugh at me because I had a well-developed plan for everything. You know, I was gonna go to college, play football, get a scholarship, go to law school, make a lot, get a you know oil and gas job. And then somewhere when I made that first decision to say, you know what, I'm not gonna be a doctor, lawyer, or failure. I'm gonna, I, I'm really good at sales. I enjoy sales. I don't care what people think of me. They thought I was crazy not being a real lawyer, especially my family. Yeah. My, for two years, all my friends, they didn't know how much money I was making. Two years, all I would hear behind my back is, can you believe Dave Meltzer's not a lawyer? He even took the bar. Can you believe he's selling internet? Right? And meanwhile, two years later, they're all begging me for jobs. <laughs> Just like I'm sure there a lot of people go. are wanting yeah. to come over to work with you. I love hearing that. Tell me about that experience of, of you know, the, the process of learning that side of it. Yeah, I, I think one word that pops into my mind is uh, uh, preparation. Um, because uh, everything that I did when, when, you know, I jumped into the entrepreneurial world as a 23-year-old had 
no clue about the advertising world. And when I jump into the art world, I don't have any idea how to work with galleries, anything like that. Um, so uh, that is just super important that everybody out there is just waiting for the right moment to jump and you can prepare, prepare, prepare. But will you ever be ready? I don't think so. You, you, you have that feeling, oh yeah, I'm ready now. I'm ready to follow my dream now. You will never be ready, you know. Right. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that you, sh that you shouldn't prepare and, and, and take your head under the arm and just jump into it, um, like calculated risks. Um, but uh, learning by doing uh, has been like one of my uh, yeah, biggest ways of learning. Um, the advertising agency having no idea what I was doing was my education. It was my education um, of learning life, learning business. And you only make the mistake one time because you can't afford to make it twice because it's real life slapping you in the face, not a teacher or anybody else. It's life that gives you that slap and you remember it and you implement it right away. It's interesting because I think listening to you, I came up with a mathematical formula that's interesting. It's when we're young, if something feels good, you know, like, you know, when I'm, I, people are just attracted to playing baseball. Right? There's just some kids that that's all they want to do from the time. That's his path. We're going to see, yeah, I can and, see your life. Yeah. That can be your, your love, but if you don't allow it to be your love and allow to practice it every day, you'll never even have a chance of anything's possible in baseball. And, and a lot of people end up not playing, but they end up being presidents of teams or announcers mm. or analysts or statisticians and go to Yale. But baseball is still their inspiration. Yeah. They just use different skills in order to effectuate that inspiration. When you look back, and I, and I do this, you know, people, because I'm a natural salesperson, but I'm a, I'm a student of sales, right? I'm a student of sharing a vision. And that helped me be an interviewer. But if I look yeah. back in my early interviews or my early speeches when I first started, before I did this every single day and practice and you know really practice and be productive, accessible, and gracious for it, I wasn't as good. Do you, do, do you believe, like, when you look back when you were young at your art, have you come a long way in your skill as an artist beyond the, the inspiration that comes through you? Is, are there actual skills that you can see like I can in interviewing and speaking? Do you see that in art? Or is art just something that you, know, you look back when you were 10 years old and you're like, oh, that piece is amazing. If I posted that, it'd sell just as well as this one. Because <laughs> I'm curious, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a different feeling. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, like a lot of stuff uh, uh, like happened with, with my skills. And I, I remember I painted my first, uh, I painted graffiti since I was 16. That's my inspiration. Um, I was also obsessed with the whole hip hop culture, even like was break dancing and Me too. But it, oh yeah oh, I can still do the splits if the floor wasn't so dirty. I can do I can still do like a baby freeze oh yeah. nice yeah. we'll do a little yeah. go on. Also that. <laughs> that's more electric boogie I think yeah, yeah. All right. well, I, can break, I can break dance though yeah let's do the that after floor. yeah I'm excited to see that um, <laughs> and so I was obsessed with, with all that and I think like my spray can just became my preferred. I call the weapon of war, you know, or or my preferred tool of expressing myself. Um, and I picked up a spray can for the first time when I was like 15 years old. Before that, pen and paper, I was just uh, obsessed with like expressing myself. Um, and it's so crazy because I see myself as such a new artist. It, it, none of this existed on the brand Michael B didn't, didn't exist five years ago. And the first gallery show I did over here, that was the first time I was putting a brush on a canvas and was like, oh, what am I doing? You know, I don't even know what I'm doing. You know, it, it was, it was, yeah, it, it was super out of my comfort zone. Um, and that is also something that like brought us to where we are here today um, and um, face your fears and, and um, getting out of that comfort zone. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm doing that every day with what I'm doing. I still feel like I'm, nothing is ever good enough. That is something that's so deep inside me. People that will see me on Instagram, oh yeah, he's so, he's so in balance with himself. And I was like, no, no, that's bullshit. It's bullshit. He doesn't you know? even meditate. <laughs> yeah, yeah don't even meditate. You know, I'm just saying that I do, but I don't. Yeah, you know? exactly. Oh yeah, but my painting is my meditation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's cool. Look. So, so I was also forcing myself to answer your question. Yeah to learning new techniques. Uh, how does this work? How does that work? How, how do I mix alcohol based with water based? I, um, I knew everything about a spray can, everything, but I could also see the style that I wanted. I needed mixed media to get what I had in my head. I, could, I couldn't only do that for spray paint. 
Um, so I have this vision up here and I've, I've thrown so many pieces out, um, but I don't do that anymore because now I'm, I'm, I've, I found like more my style, but I tell you, it, it took so long time, but it was the same with the design agency. Uh, when I had that, we're just learning by doing. And when you make a mistake on the canvas and you're 90% done and you just need that final detail, a brush stroke or something, and you fuck that up, you only do that one time. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, mistake. yeah. <laughs> All right, that last question, because you and I, although we're in completely different professions and have completely different skill sets, we share the same energy or frequency. I truly believe that. Yeah. And we both want to impact others. What piece of advice or inspirational quote or idea can you share, especially to those artists that you're trying to impact, the ones who make five or ten thousand mm. dollars a year, millions of artists that I wasn't even aware of? You know, what piece of advice, inspirational quote, or, or something to impact them that we can leave them with to help accelerate and allow them to have the same perspective of patience and exponential growth and possibilities, probabilities, and even reality? If you see yourself as an entrepreneur um, and if you don't know how to sell your pieces or you don't know how to build a brand because you have to build it, your art as a brand um, and then you find people that believe in you and that will, that will help you with that because when you start as an artist you are everything. You, you're the artist, you're the accountant, you're the salesman, you are uh, the cold caller, everything. And, and you better just jump out of that comfort zone right away and get started like that uh, because you will start alone. That, that's how everything starts. Um, so I, I think that, that, that is definitely uh, what helped me. And ask for help. Ask somebody who already did what you, uh, that already did what you're trying to do, you know? Um, and that's why when artists reach out to me, I'll be happy to, to you know, whenever I have time, I'll answer. I sometimes also do stories where, hey, the rest of the day, just fire your questions uh, because I know what's be in that position that you are like, and I want to help with that. That's it. Be uncomfortable being uncomfortable. Here with an incredible talent, an inspirational artist, Mikhail Brandrup with David Meltzer, Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.